I V M. So it's been another great week on IVM, and we're hoping that you enjoy all of the podcasts that we're being able to get out to you. As always, if you're not following us, please do follow us on IVM Podcasts on all the social media platforms. This week on Keeping It Queer, Naveen spoke to Ankit Das Gupta, the social media content manager at Mirror Now. On Who's Your Mommy, Veda discusses mom bods and the toll a pregnancy can take on women. On Vartha Lab, Akash and Naveen exchange stories with boys from the Bombay Hemp Company. On Pargati, Pawan and Hamsini are joined by Dr. Shambhavi Nayak to discuss the Nipah virus and discuss the nitty-gritties of this new disease. On Simplified, Narayan and Chak break down the differences between schizophrenia and split personality on a shorty. It's been a really, really great week and I hope that you're going to listen to all of these shows or at least some of them. In the meantime, let me get you on to this one. Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of IVM Likes. Uh, I'm Malika and today with me in the studio we have Naveen. Yes. And Abbas. Hello. And we're going to give our recommendations and have we have a topic also. We are going to talk about things that influenced us uh, to act in strange ways and affected our lives. That sounds like a very weird topic but we're going with it. A lot of things do that to me though. But you mean pop culture that's specifically Yeah, mostly pop culture. Like movies and TV shows or books. That yeah, made us sure. irrational. Cool. But before that, we are going to take a short break and then we'll get into our recommendation round. Are you just bored of doing the same old things in your city? The LBB iPhone Awesome Podcast is here to give you top 5 things to do every week in Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore and Pune from your go-to local recommendations platform across new restaurants, events, budget shopping, weekend getaways and lots more. Episodes out every Thursday on the IVM app, website, and anywhere you get your podcast from. We're back, and now let's proceed with this round of recommendations. We'll start with Naveen. Awesome. So now that everybody is catching up with Queer Eye, finally, <laughs> which I've been screaming about five months ago. Uh, oh gosh, you watched it when you, you were a hipster, right? Yeah, I was cool before all of y'all became cool. But uh, Queer Eye is like one of those shows that really gives you a lot of perspective into what's it like to be queer, but also what's it like to like have a decent way of dressing. Who's your favorite? Have you watched the show yet? Nope. No, have you watched it yet? Neither have I. Wow. Cool. <laughs> You're way ahead of the curve. The yeah. show's producer Priyanka has watched it, so she's just like nodding from the side. But uh, there are all these five gay men who basically went go around transforming the lives of straight men. Yes. So all five of them are individually also like social media influencers and people from different walks of life who came together to make the show happen. So one of my favorites from the show is Jonathan Van Ness, and before he even got on the show, he was doing a podcast called Getting Curious with Jonathan Van Ness. So the podcast is what I'm recommending. <laughs> if y'all have been listening into the believing that I'm recommending Queer Eye for the second time, which I am. If you haven't checked it out yet, like the two of my co-hosts on the show today, please do. Sure. Because it's a great show, and you'll be hooked. Like you think that it's okay, it's about gay people. It's not for me, but no, you'll be surprised how much you need them in your life. And I've heard so many good things about it from exactly. all my other co-producers. Yeah. I'm not a producer. <laughs> <laughs> from my co-workers. Co-workers. Mm. You got promotion by yourself. Colleagues. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been we've been tripping on. That. But yeah. uh, Jordan Van Ness, his podcast called Getting Curious, is interesting because he has own personality. He's got a very unique voice, and he's someone who's willing to learn. So the whole show's concept is he gets someone new on the podcast every week, and they talk about different things that he's. keen on learning and the fun part is that he keeps the viciousness going despite it being a serious topic it will be like you know it's him talking and you know that he uh, believes in that topic and he also does research on his own but does not force it upon the guest it's very it's very light and laid back for example the le- latest episode is called is saudi arabia cute now <laughs> <laughs> you know so you can imagine him saying it like that you know so the so, format is him and a guest usually yeah yeah so okay. even the ones who are on queer eye like karamo and uh, anthony they also I only know Anthony because everybody has been yeah, been drooling about, about <laughs> Anthony. But yeah, Anthony comes on the show and he talks about uh, what's it like to be a Polish Canadian who is the first generation Canadian and what is the kind of uh, xenophobia he faced in America when he moved to Virginia. So, oh, interesting. So you know, there's a lot of interesting stuff to discuss over here. One more about Renaissance art. He he calls a professor called Lisa Butin Vitella and they talk about Renaissance artists and who were the main women back then because we speak about Renaissance painters who are men. So the t- title of the episode. is who was the beyonce of renaissance art <laughs> you know so so that that mixture of the queer aspect to along with learning and understanding things is what really draws me to the podcast That's and then nice. the most interesting one though i found was a uh, one with mirai nagasu she's a american skate figure skater 
Mm. an American figure skater who did a triple axel. So he is also a big obsessive fan of uh, figure skating. So he wanted to learn how do you land a triple axel in, yeah, in figure skating. Yeah, because it's supposed to be next to impossible. Next to impossible, yeah. So the whole that movie that came out recently, Itonia, Itonia. 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 So yeah. they they show that in that. But then oh. how do you execute that with finesse? So getting curious with Jonathan Van Ness is my recommendation for today. Where can nice. you find it? It's on uh, Lipson. I mean, just look it up. For getting curious, Jonathan Van Ness will find it. Nice. Okay, uh, Abbas. Okay, I am recommending a movie today. I am recommending a film called Hail Caesar. Mm. It's a Coen Brothers movie from uh, 2016. Not a lot of people have seen this movie, which is quite surprising. So I love movies about movies. So this film is set in 1951 uh, Hollywood, and uh, the central character is played by Josh Brolin, and uh, he's actually based on a real guy called uh, Eddie Mannix, who was in Hollywood. Now he was a Hollywood. fixer quote and quote which is basically if any film runs into some sort of production problems or uh, a starlet gets pregnant so his his job was to basically fix everything mm-hmm. make sure that the news doesn't get out the tabloid ta- tabloids don't get a hold of it oh. so uh, the premise of the film is that uh, a, a biblical epic called hail caesar is being shot mm-hmm. it's based on cry on the life of christ and the central character is caesar and how he got influenced by christ and caesar is played by george clooney yeah. in the movie and the Clooney is a star in the movie as well mm-hmm. and he gets kidnapped by communists <laughs> and What? yeah and now the George Brolin character's job is to make trace his kidnapping and make sure that he doesn't uh, the news doesn't get out mm-hmm. while all of this is happening another cowboy movie gets into trouble and um, sorry another romantic movie gets into trouble and they have to replace an actor so they get a person who's known for playing these cowboy roles into that movie and he's a terrible actor mm. that's played by Alden Ehrenreich okay and uh, the new han solo yeah and the director of that movie is Ralph Fiennes and Ralph Fiennes plays this very auteur french Ralph Fiennes by the way may Ray, I correct it? you yes Ralph Fiennes yes, okay I spent years on <laughs> the name <laughs> So Ray Fiennes is this auteur French director who is uh, totally not okay with this cowboy coming mm-hmm. into his uh, his movie, and another parallel storyline is a starlet uh, played by Scarlett Starlet played by <laughs> Scarlett Johansson uh, gets pregnant. Okay. So he's also juggling that. So it's basically how Josh Brolin's character juggles these three storylines and how they kind of meet towards the end. Mm-hmm. So it's a very uh, interesting film, very brisk. I think it's hardly uh, hour forty minutes. Very Coen uh, Brothers. Yes, very Coen Brothers, yeah. and the cinematography is amazing. So mm-hmm. Roger Deakins did the cinematography, yeah. who won the Oscar this year for Blade Runner twenty forty nine. So every every uh, uh, you know frame, you can just pause it and and just stare at it yeah. and. Uh, totally uh, love it the the film is brilliantly lit and it's got the who's who of uh, people in it like i mentioned all these names plus it also has jona hill mm. it also has a uh, bunch of other really famous people uh, in the cast uh, so check it out it's on netflix and uh, it's it's a, it's a it's a romp so check it nice. out it's Wait, so i have a question yeah. it's based on a real person but yeah. this is not real But the so events the which happened are not real. Events like, right? are taken, chosen from yeah. uh, various news sources that got out. So they've picked and chosen uh, interesting bits from various. Okay. And so like the events are kind of fabricated and uh, exaggerated. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Okay. But that's because that would be really yeah. creepy if all that <laughs> happened. But then you know, probably did happen back in the day. Yeah. For all you It know, because have, based yeah. in because with movies, you know, some directors say that everything that can go wrong will go wrong when it comes to films. That's so true. that's why you have to have this one figure to like. keep the whole thing going mm. yeah channing tatum is also in yeah. the movie yeah i watched him in the trailers yeah yeah cool i'll check it out here yeah. is a nice sounds, sounds good okay uh, i'm going to recommend a short tv series on netflix it's a uh, anime because that's what i recommend apparently you netflix knobs yeah <laughs> <laughs> listen i i don't have amazon we already have had gotten like hate before from people for like just being, being netflix yeah, knobs yeah, yeah. Knobs. sorry what about prime and hotstar yeah but that's the one thing i subscribe to i'm sorry i don't have like a shit ton of disposable <laughs> okay, income okay forgive you all yeah but uh, i'm going to recommend a 10 episode series on netflix uh, an anime called agretsuko or aggressive mm. retsuko it's it's so cute okay So the characters are based and created by Sanrio who are the same people who created Hello Kitty. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is not very Hello Kitty <laughs> at all. I just don't ask that. <laughs> no, it's not. Hello Kitty is a very sweet kind of like a blank slate, you know, Hello Kitty is anything. She can be sweet or happy or whatever. It's and it's just another cat based paraphernalia forced on her truth. <laughs> Listen, do not say a word against Hello Kitty. It is adorable. That's But the point cats. 
in pop culture you know get out of this room <laughs> <laughs> but the point we in the retsuko is nothing like this so retsuko is like a 25 year old single working red panda cuz everything is anthropomorphic in this oh. yeah a uh, red panda in a very boring office job doing accounting and basically she is very very sick to death uh, with this job but she has to do it because that's corporate life for you you have to get your bread and butter so and it's a very relatable look at how women especially have to uh, navigate the office environment mm-hmm. the first episode hit me hard like oh my gosh we have all faced this so you know she has to deal with like her sexist boss she has to deal with you know casual sexism with amongst her colleagues and you know have to laugh about things which they say in passing which you know people may not realize that it's kind of rude and disrespectful but mm-hmm. how women have to you know just navigate we have to learn all these these emotional intelligences to navigate you know office environment mm. and uh, especially in asia a lot of uh, you know the stereotype for an office woman it's very you know confined you have to be on time you have to be there before everyone else you have to leave after everyone else you have to like make tea for your co-workers cuz that's the woman's job to do mm. and this takes a very insightful and very cute look at the whole situation so she she's constantly having to you know do menial jobs for her you know boss and the fun part about this thing is that how she deals with this all that pent up frustration and rage of her office job she takes out later by going to a karaoke bar and singing death metal nice. and thrash metal <laughs> nice. so you you know you get these super cute shots of her just being a cute red panda anime kawaii style and then you know it uh, uh, cuts later to her in that full you know goth black makeup screaming with the thrash metal music playing in the background mm-hmm. and it's amazing and also shows the you know different ways that other women in her office job deal with things which uh, she she doesn't deal with it that way but others do because that's one way to get to the top or at least rise with within your uh, your capability so uh, other women are like more cold and you know like they show no emotion so it's like you know they can kind of navigate office politics that way while another person called sunoda is like the big kiss up of the office so you know she's like constantly complimenting a boss so that's why she gets out of work and things like that mm-hmm. so it it's a good look at how different people have to cope with their you know professional lives in different ways and how she's she constantly feels like you know i can't do these things so yeah. the only way i can deal with it is have a breakdown in the bathroom and scream death metal <laughs> it's great it's great i highly recommend it it's just 10 episodes it's 15 minutes each you can probably oh. binge watch it in like a night i don't know so what's the name again it's called agretsuko or aggressive retsuko nice it's great so suko means panda probably i guess uh, probably yeah because it's red suko right so it's like it's red not panda. red it's red suko oh then it's not maybe you know but it's like some of the names are kind of like pomantos of names because there's a person called feneko who's definitely a fenek fox okay so you know i'm not sure my japanese is not not non existent so okay. don't take my word for I it i love the word kawaii though it's so cute it means cute Yeah, <laughs> big sparkly eyes. Yeah. Massive Kawaii. head. Yeah. It's great. So, um that's it for our round of recommendations. We'll be back in just a minute with our topic of discussion which is in things which influenced us to be the way we are now. Hey what's good you guys it's your boy Ranveer Alabadia from the YouTube channel Beer Biceps and the Beer Biceps team is bringing you Hustle Science. Hustle Science is basically a show where we interview hustlers. We ask them about what made them legendary. We ask them about their success secrets. We go to the core of their legendary status in life. It's going to be hosted by my boy Tejaswin Gumber and yours truly Ranveer Alabadia. Make sure you catch Hustle Science on the IVM podcasting app and website or any kind of podcasting platform that you use to get your podcasts. Make sure you check it out. The episodes are going to be out every single Tuesday. Welcome back and we are back with our topic of discussion. 
Yes, today we are discussing how uh, you know pop culture usually influences us to do crazy things oh, yeah. uh, without even realizing we, we in the back of our head we do stuff that we don't want to do or sometimes we want to do and maybe lead us in the right way because in eventuality everything you see on screen or read in books or listen to in music is uh, a representation of somebody else's life that they have lived mm-hmm. and they have lived to tell the tale so in in a way it's kind of like a yeah. good thing so has it ever happened in your lives where you all have been like let's just get uh, influenced man <laughs> Uh, kind of yeah i mean i'm not sure it's like somebody else's life because okay so growing up my main thing that i loved was lord of the rings okay mm-hmm. i saw those movies and i fell in love i was like i want to do this i want to go and make things like this mm-hmm. so i carried that for a very long time i had to finish like college and uh, get my bachelor's and everything and then after that i was like Okay, it is time to pursue my Lord of the Rings dream. I got into animation because of Lord of nice. the Rings. So yeah, I finished my whole animation diploma, etc., etc. After after that, I did give it up because I was like, you know, I I enjoyed animation, but it wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. It also caused a lot of strain on my arm, which I had to give it up for. So, yeah. but it was definitely because of Lord of the Rings that I studied things like creature design and you know. fantasy um fantasy things fantasy settings mm-hmm. so that was like a really big reason why i got into animation hmm that's interesting because you uh, pursued animation because of lord of the rings similarly as i've mentioned before on this podcast almost famous was my favorite mm-hmm. movie growing up yeah. and i wanted to write for rolling stone because the main guy in that movie wanted to write for rolling <laughs> yeah. stone oh nice so i uh, always wanted to pursue, pursue that always wanted to become a music journalist mm. so similarly i also applied for rolling stone and did get a job in rolling stone and uh, a few months in i realized it's it's not kind of meant for me just right? like the character <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the character kind of actually gets his come up and in the end yeah. but uh, but yeah i mean it it that uh, pursuit of that thing um, mm-hmm. came from the movie because unfortunately i wasn't born in 60s 1970s america yeah, and this yeah. the scene in india isn't the same as it was uh, there mm-hmm. um but that that fantasy of wanting to write uh, for a music magazine and influencing people's musical tastes yeah. was something that came from from almost famous and uh, even when i watch the movie today i mean it's it's just become a thing of its own like it's it, it, i'm feel connected to that film so yeah that pursuing a mus- uh, career in music journalism came from from uh, a movie for me yeah So for me, it's this book called Into the Wild uh, by John Krakow. I read mm. the book back in college. I was in engineering, doing this shitty course which I didn't want to do. Mm. Uh, I was forced into it. My parents didn't get my vibe. They were just like, just do it for the sake of degree and then figure out. But I knew in in their heart they wanted me to like become a corporate slave. Mm. So by the end of my final year, I got a job at Larsen and Tubro, which is a big company, L and T. And uh, I got a call from them and everything. And I was like, you know what? Maybe before I go for my uh, proper job placement, I'll I'll go and take some. Some, some tracks and everything, and the book really inspired me to to go off that you know strain part and just like figure out my own thing. I became very adventurous, even though my figure right now does not kind of convey that. But I was doing like mountain climbing, I was trekking, I was hiking, Whoa. I was river rappling, all of that shit. And my friend Abishay, call out to him, he's right now in America, but he was like one of those guys who was constantly there with me. And uh, we watched the movie together when the movie came out based on the book. And uh, mm. he then Abishay went on and went for the Himalayan base camp and did the base camp. Did I I kind of stayed back, but. If you read the book and if you re- watch the movie, you'll understand that the reason Christopher McCandless, the protagonist of the book, did that—that that is, he gave all his money away and just ran away from home without telling his family—is because family life was pretty skewed, mm. and I kind of ended up projecting that on my family. and uh, then held them accountable for all the bad things that happened in my life and that in a way then pushed me away from my family for a good 4 5 years you know where i was just like i was writing journals but i was like these people are not understanding me and they oh are like against God. me you were angsting in a journal yeah i was Amazing. angsting in a journal since i was 9th grade so i still do that sometimes i just like i've got a i've got a folder on my laptop called cluster f- <laughs> I'll go and write everything that's going on to my mind. But yeah, I found it easy to you know escape the reality that I was living and find my solace in books and and in nature and in people who I met involuntarily. You know, so that was for the longest time my my thing. I left L and T because I could not take it anymore. I became mm-hmm. a writer. I became a comedian. I became all these things I wanted to. inherently become but never had the guts to face them so that book gave me that one push that you know what if you're not going to say the the reality that you want to live with your, you know you don't share it with your family then what's the point why why are you even 
living this life and i did run away from home for 15 days as you said, what yeah i ran away from home for 15 days long back so before i came out as gay oh. mm. okay so for me coming out was in different phases you know mm. first stop being an engineer become a writer then an mm. atheist then then being gay and then being a pot smoker whatever so you know you need to write a like a memoir or something so, so my current the comedy show i'm doing right now my one hour solo show is just this it's me talking about how i came out in different uh, measures over the okay. past 4 years so, so was there any pop culture that influenced you to write comedy Well not really I was uh, into Bill Hicks a lot okay so Bill Hicks was that guy who spoke about you know legalizing marijuana about mm. being drunk about uh, molestation about right. dirty so, so it was pretty straight up you saw a comedian and you wanted to I wanted be, yeah so I saw yeah. we all see like Russell Peters right. we all see all these other guys right. like Axis of Evil was pretty famous mm. back when I was growing up but until I watched Bill Hicks I was not really convinced that I was going to okay. get into comedy but once I watched Bill Hicks I was like this guy is speaking my language right. but now in retrospect you you do find a lot of misogyny and homophobia there but mm-hmm. you know that was a time that was a time yeah, yeah it's a so, product of its time yeah but uh, quite ahead of its time anyway. for me i think it was the simpsons which made me feel it's totally okay if you write bizarre humor it yeah, doesn't yeah. necessarily need to be from a to b mm-hmm. you can have wild ideas uh, uh, and you should be able to put them on so the simpsons and uh, uh, more recently i thought 30 rock sort of did yeah. that where it was the even if the jokes don't land there is no reason to not for them to be in there so uh, yeah but they are the best writers in general yeah sure people yeah, so who are now like doing proper comedy tours exactly yeah judah friedland for example yeah, exactly so the dream in the uh, very early on when i started watching these show the dream was to be a staff writer on a sitcom <laughs> and yeah. then i started researching these guys and came to know they also do stand up and that's how i started watching their stand up exactly. and came to know yeah, that uh, yeah. it, was, it was it was a big deal nice nice i don't have any comedy stuff or anything but like I don't know if this counts as pop culture, but uh, I watched a couple of years ago on Geek and Sundry's channel. I watched a series called Tabletop, mm-hmm. and uh, basically it's just Will Wheaton playing a bunch of board games <laughs> with his friends, yeah. and I loved it. I thought this was the best thing. I went and bought out, bought a lot of games, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it influenced me. I went and I went for the first time to a meetup group because I was like, "What is this? Where do I find people like this?" Yeah, I didn't know meetup was a thing. I went mm-hmm. and joined the meetup group. Uh, we ended up making a board game group and then hosting things like board game events throughout Mumbai on different mm, days. So nice. that was pretty cool. That was Does it that still was, exist? Yeah, the group exists. It's a little more quiet now because people have kind of calmed down from the initial <laughs> craze. Yeah. Yeah. But for sure, we definitely still play board mm. games. So that is definitely a facet of my life which has been directly influenced by something yeah. I saw. Another thing that kind of helped me fall into comedy was uh, watching a lot of SNL. Right. Like I was working mm. a job after I quit engineering and quit my job at LNT. I I went to work for a content writing job, mm. which was two in the afternoon to eleven in the night, the mm. most cushiest job mm. you can get time wise. So I had like all this time in the night to spend, you know, watching. stuff mm. and i would watch a lot of christian week sketches right. like her and will ferrell were like down right the funniest people i'd watch because they would break character but mm. they were still like so right. good they were so good like yeah. this wait will ferrell will ferrell will ferrell will ferrell will ferrell yeah will ferrell is the voice of ron stoppable and kim possible oh, oh nice okay. so so, <laughs> so this not that guy Deep will, will, will ferrell is is will ferrell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how to put it better the other guys yeah yeah, yeah. okay cool so will ferrell and and christian week were like major influences for me to start doing improv you know because despite i'm i'm one of those people who goes with the flow and like lives vicariously or whatever but i still like to have certain amount of control on my life mm. but improv as an art form teaches you to let go of that control mm. and just like be in the moment mm. and really respect the stage that you're given so that came to to improv and and learning from SNL. I really want to go and try improv one day. I want to watch Saturday night live in the audience first for my like whenever I go to America if I do I want to be in that audience and just like witness that for real. That's one dream that I have. Do it, Naveen. Yeah. I I'll believe in you. But yeah, I dreams. think improv should be something that people should do by default. Like now a yeah. lot of lot of corporates are uh, doing like these workshops and my friend Max goes around giving these workshops and uh, it's pretty cool. Sometimes they're not interested, sometimes they go want to go for the booze because that's what corporate functions are all about. But sometimes people do care because you know we we learn to listen yeah. which is very missing sometimes in in people, you know. They yeah. don't listen, they don't care. Just like what's my opinion? I have to keep having my opinion. 
but that's what improv teaches you so yeah, yeah. i think it's a very good skill to have mm-hmm. in daily life yeah. one you learn to react to situations mm. which can throw you for a loop and two you learn to build off someone else rather yeah. than yeah, yeah. you you have to play along with that person there's yeah. no question of going off track because then you've kind of lost yeah. the game so the main clear difference between stand up comedy and improv comedy as an art form is that stand up mostly uh, is like kind of shitting on people and then you become a little elevated improv is about Working being, with them, yeah, shooting eleva- together, ele- shooting together, or elevating the person on the stage instead of right. you being the hero. Like you know, you make yeah. the other person, you yeah. endow them, you kind of give them yeah. better stuff to do. So that's what my learning has been. That's great. We should all uh, do improv one. Yes, day. we should do. We should do an improv show, guys. Let's do that. It, this is it. we we do an improv show on the stage. <laughs> yeah, we're doing <laughs> it right now. This no, is no, no. all improv. This is not the one. We do a show called Sonology Sonology <laughs> with Adar Malik <laughs> and Tupti Kamkar. Subtle plug. Yeah. Too. Subtle plug. Which yes. I also am in. <laughs> okay, that's it for our show today. And IVM likes. Uh, I'm Alika. You can find me on Twitter at Cape Fox Alex. Uh, Naveen, you, where can we find you on Twitter? At House of Narona. And Abbas. I am at Abbas Momin on Twitter. And you can find us at IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, see you guys next time. Bye. 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 As you can see, we have a podcast listener in his natural habitat. Millions of years of evolution have led him to this point. He's on his way to work and listening to podcasts makes his miserable day better. He will now head to work and use all his knowledge to communicate with other colleagues and possibly future mates. You can find more of his species on ivmpodcasts.com. Your one-stop destination where you can check out all the coolest indian podcasts happy listening